Nathaniel's bad, right? Like, just trying to get rid of those carries that we're kind of seeing more and more come through the bot side. Potential here, if you want to go back towards something like the um, the Jin, we've seen that in the past. Ezreal as well has been a, a pick that we've seen crop up a little bit, although it doesn't have the best of times against the Jinx because you tend to kind of give her a bit of a free lane. Um, I've actually been a fan of the Varus. Seen a lot yeah. over in the LEC. We've seen it creep up a little bit. Eric has actually played as well, but honestly, I think uh, the Varus a little bit underrated in the ability to kind of like set up these fights with the utility that he has and also just trying to be the uh, the push in lane against what a lot of the Jinx wants to do. Yeah. The support Ice. bans continuing for RA and the ADC bans of plenty for oh. LGD. They ban yeah. away iBoys of Helios and the Kaisa. I think you go Senna here then. I thought they'd get rid of the Senna, but I think you can still have like relatively good farm and the opportunity to push in. I don't know about this one. <laughs> I feel like keeping the counter pick for your mid lane is probably a little bit stronger. Like you can always like give over Victor, then take something like the Oriana for Strive and but looks like they just want to try and make sure that they have the opportunity to play at range, get that zone control since they're kind of lacking it with the, the Jace in the top lane. Very, very interesting. I, I guess the, the counter pick not being utilized this time around by RA, but they know what they want to go for and they do just that. Now on the other side, we're looking at LGD to pick up their final solo laner as well as their support. So I would expect uh, maybe the support to come out here, but maybe we'll just get, you know, changes going through yeah. because uh, it is the Akali that gets locked in, which I'm very excited for itself in the solo lane, but as well as for either Jay or Peter, or actually Jay to be able to pilot that I one. mean, yeah, I, be for I, Jay, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is very exciting in its own right. But this final piece is very, very integral to LGD, oh. and they lock in the Maokai. Okay, um... I'm that's I'm one like that I, I'm, so I'm trying to work through it, right? Like, you, the Leona was gone, Rakan was gone. Maokai, like, works well into compositions where you have a ton of range you can try and kite back, right? But it's not exactly... Uh, <laughs> oh. I love it because every single pick of this draft after the first two has just decimated you, Dada. Okay. And I'm yeah, so here for it. <laughs> So for LGD, right, like Maokai works well into compositions that have range and want to kite back. The only range that you have on LGD side is the Jinx. So honestly, Rare Adam, we're the ones I was about to say is you have Jace, you have Victor. You are the ones that are going to be able to kite back super effectively. Lock in something like the Senna. You've got really good kite back, great control, zone control between like Senna W, the Victor, like. And then we get paid. I see <laughs> so your analysis I, and I raise I you, I boy. All right, he knows what he wants to play, and he gets yeah. it, all right? <laughs> yeah, I think Vayne works wonders into a Hecarim that's going to jump in on top of her. Jay or the Akari is going to be standing right beside her the entire time she tries to do anything. And then in case she even tries to enter a fight because both of those are gone, Venus is going to be there. That seems like a great opportunity. But it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's it's just, yeah. it's so interesting to me because it's a far cry from the Aphelios for I play, and that's been the bread and butter for this series so far, at least, but to kind of fully flip the table here in the game three right you're putting all your eggs into the basket of this vein right like the vein is the late game carry you've got the the uh, the victor in the mid lane as well and it's setting up those pieces to succeed we saw q be the main focus last time around i would say we'll probably get more of that but i would like to see some resources given to this vein that maybe we see the eye boy pop off once again oh you have to like Vayne gets shoved in so hard in this lane, it's going to be nearly impossible for it to really do anything. So we're going to have to see some attention down to the spot side. The only thing is with the Maokai there, has really, really good peel, especially against Leon. So it yeah. makes it kind of tough for Leon to, to get into that lane, especially post six. Oh, we do make our way onto the rip for the third game of the day. LGD taking on RA, both at one and five, trying to get a second series win on the board. This is the same thing we saw oh. last game. And this time, just like last time, will not end up in Eric dying. Nice attempt, though. You engine already able to kind of um, just hook just around the corner there onto Eric, but not quite able to do so. So let's look at where these lanes are going to be situated, right? For Rare Adam, once more, you look at that top side. Push in mid, push in top, first strike even for the victor here as well. You're going to be able to have a ton of control over this top half of the map. When you look towards LGD once more, they have the push in the bot side. So we're kind of looking to go 
Okay, do we see Shadow once more trying to make these plays down onto Eyeboy? Maybe look for the dives. It will be tough, though, just because um, you always have to be careful Strive having control over that mid lane. But I want to see what Shadow can do. Hecrum with the Ghost so potent when it comes to those early games. He is, and it's opting more into the place that we know Shadow for. The aggression, the early pathing, the, the unique pathing as well. And that's something I want to see here in this third game that we haven't necessarily gotten in the other two. And it, it, a little bit for Shadow last game, but obviously they lost it out so well for them but the, the question is how where do we see that early aggression We're still both these junglers who have been the keys to the early game for both these games we've seen so far jay taking a lot of uh, damage in this mid lane has gone for the triple reju feeds um which should make it a little bit easier for him to sustain through what's going to be a pretty abysmal laning phase but i think uh, coming back to like your kind of jungle point um Leanne, looking at it, has, like, the opportunity to try and play through mid if he wants to. Like, push in, good damage. Like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Leanne try and go for, like, some sort of early, like, level 3, level 4 dive onto mid lane, right? Like, look at the health that Jay's on. I would love to see Leanne just, like, you Raptors wrap in onto the, the blue side jungle here and go for a dive. Maybe even considering it now, as you can see, try yeah. to see if he can move in to get vision a little bit of aggression but from the side of Leanne still a little bit of the same though right like when we see these two junglers we know them for the early game aggression the pathing to try to get that aggression rolling into a snowball for them and unfortunately for this time Leanne it will not work out. yeah I mean unfortunate for Leanne that he kind of went for the hey I want to figure out where Shadow is and because they didn't get any sort of early vision down, despite the fact that uh, Yu Yanja and Strive had kind of ran into, or sorry, Yu Yanja and I Boy had run into that bot side. So they don't know where Shadow is. So Lian doesn't feel comfortable to try and make any sort of mid lane play. But we'll go back over to his red. Gives the opportunity for Shadow to have the faster clear as he's going to be able to move back in, clear his Krugs and look for a quick reset. So maybe a window of opportunity for Shadow here to get up towards this top side early and. Uh, make a play on towards Cube. Cube really wants to keep pushing in this lane. But if. Shadow has just been able to pick up that tempo advantage and knows he has it because he spotted Leanne on that ward just at the uh, at the blue book. Maybe LGD try to make something happen. Yeah, I guess that's the next thing I'm looking at is where these resets end up, or I guess the redeploys end up going to, right? But Shadow decides not to back. Okay. Oh, he's going for another link game, but towards the bot side. But again, I, I would like what you were saying. Like, focus on Fearness a little bit more up here on this Gwyn because we've seen what Gwyn's can do across the LPL. Also, just because it's such a terrible matchup, right? Absolutely. Like, 12 CS lead already. <laughs> Cube has been able to do a really good job of um, trading. And when you end up with the phase rush in this matchup, it becomes really hard then for uh, the Gwen to try and do anything, right? She tries to jump on you with the snip snip. You get that quick combo off and you're able to just run the hell away. Here's Shadow, though, going for the play that we talked about. Devastating charge. Going to be activated here as well as the ghost. The cube flashes onto the other oh. side of the devastating charge. Or actually, charge comes through afterwards, but cube gets out because of that flash. And no matter how many times it feels like Shadow focuses its top side, cube just gets out. Yeah, great knockback from Cube to keep himself alive there. Especially with both ghosts burned by Fairness and Shadow. A good amount invested by LGD onto the top side. But that's the beauty of having Ghost. That cooldown comes up that little bit quicker. So Cube will have to be safe in kind of about three and a half minutes time. The good news at least is that Cube wanted to go for a reset anyway. So he's just able to take it back. Come back into the lane. And shouldn't miss out on too much in the grand scheme of things. So we did see the, the redeploys come out for both of the... Start for Shadow, get a little bit more speed on the horsey man, but he was top side, actually going back towards the bottom side now. So a little bit different from the original plan. We kind of wanted to see maybe a little bit more focus towards the top side of the matchup, but it's still hovering around this dragon, which we did see RA opt into very early last game. A little bit different than this time. You just don't have the bot side control to try and go for that. And nicer resets from Eric shouldn't give it. Leanne, though, oh, wants to try and used... punish the fact that Fearness had Shadow help out. Yeah, he just used the mist as well, so we'll not have that cooldown. It's, it should be coming up here pretty soon, but is it going to be in time? Fearness under tower. There's a beautiful dive, and Leanne makes it out by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, forced to flash away, but look at this Akali. Jay trying to roam up past the level six. Does perfect execution ready to go? Trigger is gonna be pulled here eventually, Jay. 
Just trying to buy his time to make sure it can happen. Oh, there we go. Cube going in for the counter, though, as he's got the damage here. Jay just can't do anything about it. Accelerated Shock Blast not going to be utilized. A very close call from Jay there. I thought he was going to maybe try and look for the, the turnaround. It carries a lot of damage at this stage, especially with the, uh, the, the boots already picked up. But Jay just going to heal up with those rejuve beads and make his way back in towards that mid lane. Just try to sustain a good drive as he can. I do want to say it's been really interesting to be so far for Leanne in this third game, right? And I want to go back to what we've seen in the past previous two games in the differences that we have seen, right? In that first game, LGD and Shadow himself getting out of the map quickly and being able to find a lot of those early decisions even though they weren't like leading into kills or anything he was still getting presence on the map that's something i feel like hasn't been necessarily true for lan in this third game although it's still an integral part to ra winning he hasn't been able to get that same gumption at least that we've seen previously cube though getting the gumption put onto him nice moves from jay and oh, he missed. oh no a caster cursed him they got shadow here he doesn't even get to help jay finishes it off Okay, so at least from LGD's side, they still get the kill. A little bit messy, but look, it's still working for them. And this is really big, right? Because for Cube, he wants to try and punish through this strong lane. But as you say, right, Leon has got up here to try and help out once, but hasn't been able to get up here now again to protect his top laner. So LGD are starting to get Fearness into a great position. And when Jay and Fearness can play through side lanes really well, that's going to be an issue that's going to come back and fight rare at him if they're not careful. You need yeah. to make sure that's the end that you're keeping control of this early game. And that's something else that is much different for LGD going into this one. The other two games, absolute team fight comp, right? Like you had a little bit of finickiness here or there. This one is more so opting into that one through one, making sure that the solo laners can have something to say. iBoy immediately burns cleanse and try to get away. Beautiful condemn back. He's got the level six and he makes it out alive. Yeah, just the cleanse and best versus the flashes Jin down at Fearness, trying to see if he can get onto Q, but as you can see, phase rush makes that difficult, but Leon is here. So is Shadow. So much focus on this top side. Could get that 2v2, but it's Brop that takes Shadow's ire. So the way of pushing in for Q means that Fearness will be just fine for the moment, and Leon will not get the game off. King Jai just here to help Jay shove in this mid lane, give it a little bit of control and him on the map as well now. Um, I mean, all said and done, right? Like, as this starts to go through, if we have this super slow-paced early game, it's it's not really like it's a massive favor for either side, right? Like, yeah. for Eric, yes, you've got that scaling advantage over iBoy, but I can, I can do relatively well. Um, side lanes are more what LGD are trying to look for. And I mean, look, Jay was thinking, oh, well, is this Akali in towards that side? But not having the TP will mean that the uh, that Jay will need to be kind fight, of situated fight, with the fight, team. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> this is what I love, Dagda. We're going in. It's the onslaught of shadows to kick us off, and Leanne dies because of it. Fearness gets the kill. Got the grasping roots going a little bit wide. Yuyanja flashing over the wall, but LGD find the fight. And they're still chasing down this Nautilus. Yuyanja, where are you going to go? Trying to TP in with the wolves. It was a one for one. Oh. See if they can make it a two for one. And he is. Oh, wait. Oh, I thought he was going to be one with the wolves, but he is not. Yuyanja has to get away. Dredge line out. Fearness trying to chase him down, but Cube is there as defense. Yeah, Fearness not able to spot him. So Yuyanja, it'll take him a little bit of longer time to get back, but he will return home safely. And Rift Out is still up and available. Neither team was able to get it despite the fact. Uh, so as we come in here, just see Shadow, great engage coming through here, you know, managing to get Fear on towards the victor in the back line, which sets up nicely for Leanne to get the kill. But as Drive is able to come back out, he managed to turn one back around. So a one for one trade all said and done. As we may start to eye this one up once more. Eric and I, boy, have made it back down towards the bottom side. Shadow looking to clear out vision. The Super Mega Death Rocket is up and available for Eric in just a few moments. So if Rare Adam are trying to contest, they do have to be worried that that ult could end up connecting very fitting that both junglers fall at the same time in the end gauge there in that last fight we'll see if we get another fight though deja vu as we put ourselves around the rift herald here there's the engage from yuyanja but can the shock blast on the side help 
Cube is in there doing damage. The Mega Death Rocket snipe from across the map is going to get the addition of Eric into the fight. LGD now trying to take it to you, Yanja, but he does not go down. Strive and Cube, the damage dealers here in the fight, are trying to separate Jay, but they might have put themselves into a fish in a barrel type situation as Jay is popping off in a double kill for the LGD mid laner. 4 and 0 oh for Jay now on this Akali. This Akali is going to be huge in this game. The fact that Shadow went down does mean that Leanne does get the Rift Herald. It has got into the hands of Cube, but I think on LGD's side, they'll be happy with the amount of gold they picked up from that skirmish. They see here, right? A great hook onto Shadow from Yanja. But with everyone kind of committing the damage to Shadow, who managed to stay alive for so long, the Super Mega Death Rocket picking off um, Leon as well, this turned into a 3v3 that's very scattered with no real CC apart from Yanja to lock up Jay. He's having a field day here as he just gets to pop back and forth, working with the, the two shrouds and essentially between Fearless and the <laughs> Hall of Mist to keep LGD at healthy status and able to take the fight. Yeah, it is terrifying there when those two get rolling together. But just going out at the top side, a little bit of redemption there. Leanne spotted out with the lane ward from LGT. And keep your eyes on Shadow because he is waiting here in the wings. Has the onslaught of Shadows as well. So if they try to make a dive off of this Rift Herald play, they can get it. Jay will be spotted coming up river. So maybe they don't go for the dive. It might just be the Rift Herald. Kiernis actually going in on the aggressive here as de Devastating Charge is available for Shadow. They see Leanne, they immediately turn on to him. He pops the Crescent Guard, but that Onslaught of Shadows is going to seal the deal. Leanne dies to Jay, of all people, giving him his fifth kill of the game. <laughs> of course it had to be Jay. Jay gets all the kills in the LGD games. What are you on about? But hero MVP of that ward manages to spot out. Now we're going for more. Diving under tower against Cube. The tower shots on Shadow. Oh, it's so close, but Fearness gets the kill. And success from LGD yet again. I love the BM from Shadow as well. Yep. Just spamming the emotes. It's not even this game. It's just all the time. You it's see him in his, his cam too. He's just giggling, laughing. Like he's yeah. jumping around in his seat. It's great. I mean, he's he's enjoying himself, right? Like, and it's really cool to see as well because like i remember casting shadow back in like it was e masters 2018 when he yep. was playing in the italian league back in the pg masters and the fact he's gone from there to lec now to lpl it's been such a chaotic journey for him but you can still see how much he loves the game and the fact as well that he's uh he's having some pop-off moments it's got a good one that's what i love so much about shadow that's why i would say he's you know one of my favorite players to watch and keep track of because he has had such a weird and crazy story but all the time kept the same mentality at least outright right the happiness the jovial laughing the, the kind of taking every moment in stride and making sure to capitalize on those moments knowing when things are going wrong but still keeping the mental strong is something i i've always prided for shadow himself. coming back into this right we're just coming up to the 15 minute mark let's take stock of where we are as i say that though shadow's about to change that stock we'll have to see if it's up or down though are the stocks <laughs> going up or are they going down devastating charge will mean that the stocks oh. are rising baby and fearness takes the kill lgd going to the moon this game i mean you're getting fearness in complete control now this top side four one and four on this win the rift maker already completed she is so damn strong and she hasn't even reset off the terror damage she's taken poor matchup for fearness nah 400 gold bounty Jay is well in this mid lane. Five and O oh, is going to be unstoppable in these fights. And remember my sarcastic rant about iBoy <laughs> trying to play this vein in team fights. Good luck, to you, buddy, because yeah. it got a hell of a lot worse thanks to Shadow on this Hecker. Anytime I see the Hecker and I'm at ADC, I get terrified because you know, we've all been on the receiving end of those devastating charges slash onslaught of shadows. It's never fun, and iBoy. Uh, He's, I hope he, wa I know he has it more than likely, but I hope he watched the movie Dodgeball because he's got to figure out how to dodge all these wrenches and, and kind of dip dive But duck, the thing is, dodge. it's like heat seeking wrenches. <laughs> it's all point and click. Like, Shadow just runs at him and, and auto attacks oh, him. He hits no. him. Jin Zhao just hits W and it connects. Like, 
It doesn't, but these aren't wrenches. They're just like attached <laughs> to the back and people are just flinging them at them. Oh my God, I love it so much. We'll see RA trying something on bot side though. As the wind becomes lightning, connects onto Jin Zhao. The grasping roots utilized backwards though, trying to get them away from him. Jin Zhao just dies. Top lane, Cube, yet again, is just being oppressed. He gets out with a nice flash. Yeah, I mean, look, Shadow's always around when Cube's in question, but LGD starting to move up now. The Super Mega Death Rocket not able to connect. So at least on Rare Adam's side, trying to trade tip for tat on these side lanes is good. It's just that as you start to uh, go forward, I just don't see where the win condition for Rare Adam is. Cube is too far behind. You have some good team fight structure, yes, with uh, Leanne's driving Yanja, but your follow up isn't really there when you look at what LGD are trying to achieve. We've also got Rip Tower coming up in just a few moments, and with like the nine kills on the LGD side situated between the two solo laners, th that just feels like you're going to be able to walk on in and take that. Jay so difficult to try and lock down. Same when you look at uh, Fearness. I don't know how you try and contest this. It's, it's definitely going to be difficult, you know, especially when Jay about to finish his second item here as well. The spikes are coming through, but they do have to kind of bring it all together for RA, right? Make sure that they're being able to play this front-to-back style that they wanted to bring to the table. Making sure that iBoy can be safe and that you're pulling for the vein. Because we said, you know, the scaling factors are there. The damage factors are there for Strive and iBoy, but it's all about execution. So far, that is all in LGD's court. They're going to TP in here, though. They want to fight over the second Rip Herald. Jay taking the fight against Cube, though. He's got the follow-up. And Jay Cube, you just die every time there. Fearness going forward. They've got everything they need. Boy in the back does help get one cleared out. And that Mountain Rift is helping them a ton. The Chaos Storm from Strive keeps them at bay. The flat from you, John. John to Eric. He misses the dredge line. The Grasping Roots come out. That's a triple root as Eric is popping away. Shadow gets condemned back but eric gets the kill anyways yeah jj not having the uh, ultimate just the start of that made it kind of tough for lgd to have multiple ways to follow up in the fight but you can see as soon as that comes through lgd take us i'm pretty sure they also got the rift herald in the grand scheme of things as well as shadow finished that off yep there it is just in his back pocket while that fight or that scrap was happening mid but we're just gonna get a replay here right like jay destroying cube in the side lane even with the knockback He'd already uh, connected with the shuriken, so the flips to follow. And then, how do you deal damage here, right? Like, yes, Ibo gets a couple of pop shots off onto um, uh, the Gwen, who went a bit too far forward with the shroud. But up until that stage, like Ibo just wasn't able to do anything. Eric, great reaction with the Gale Force. I shouldn't spot that the first time around, but you see there, the uh, ult comes through from the Maokai and makes it impossible for Rare Adam to follow up. I boy and Strive just have to run away. Now we're at Dragon and uh, ding, ding, ding. Sounded like round two. <laughs> we're ready for the fight here as I boy joining the fray. Five man squad from RA is present. They got to be careful not to get picked apart. You got Jay on the flip side and ready for the flank. RA realize the predicament they're in and they pull off. Yeah, they don't want to try and go against this, but Jay. Just getting hooked in the mid lane. Rift Herald popped from bot side. We get the tower as they get the dragon. So. Double trade up for LGD, Leanne. Trying to see if he can get onto Fearness as he goes through. Get this Rift Tower down so they can't take the tower, but still LGD. Tipping River. I'm spotting a couple of members from Rare Oh no, I boy. Head. Devastating charge into the onslaught of Shadows. Clint's came out though, and Shadow might have overextended now. He gets hit by the dredge line. I boy chained up by the flame chompers, but Strive gets the kill onto Shadow. Here comes Jay though, with the perfect execution. Mega Death Rocket gets blown away by the pressing guard. Here we go back in Fearness. The flank from Cube, though. They turn around immediately as a double kill comes across for Fearness. That's a big turnaround for LGD. And you can see how difficult it is to operate in these fights as uh, Rare Adam, right? Like iBoy and Strive getting zoned off. One by Jay, another by Shadow. Then you've got Jin Zhao who's able to come in with the ultimate again and lock up iBoy after Cleanse's burn. Now, Eric. Honestly, I might just chase him down, have the Gale Force and the opportunity to uh, continue poking from afar, but LGD coming out with more and more victories here. Despite the 15 to 7 gold lead, or kill lead though, there is only a slight 2,000 gold lead for Rare, or sorry, for LGD right now. And I think that's very telling at how RA are staying. 
being able to find at least something passively as well as you know, not getting put too far behind. And even in moments like this, this is an overextension from Shadow. Yeah, I mean, massively so, right? Like, um, Shadow goes in that bit too far, thinks he can get Eye Boy, but kind of forgetting about the cleanse. And then the re-engage here from Rare Adam is also the overextension, right? Fearless yeah, has the hollowed mist here. You don't have the damage, so you get the two quick kills coming through. Um, for Fearness alongside the healing, especially when both solo laners of LGD have built for team fights, right? Like, you're not going for the Nashers too, or going for uh, um, something else on Jay. You're looking more at, like, the Zanya's Hourglass, which is going to help him with survivability in fights. The Cosmic Drive, which helps you with your movement speed in team fights and trying to keep pace with uh, the members of RA that are trying to run away. Yeah, exactly. You gotta keep all eyes on Shay, especially in the team fights and how he navigates those. So we'll bring our attention to the 131 set up by LGD. Not exact answers, I feel like, for RA, but their answer is to just go in on mid. Uh, devastating charge into Onslaught of Shadows again, just pulling RA away from the fight. Although Eric might find you, Yanja. There you go. Eric's going excited now. He's still going. He's got the lethal tempo procced. And now Jay coming to slam them home. He's going in. No way. Okay, misses the shuriken flip. I think that's a good thing. And Jay does not go in any further. Yeah, I feel like we need to rename Jay to Jaws in this game and just like <laughs> play that music every time he's running around. Because like it just feels like whenever Jay is close, someone's about to go down. But not able to do so that time around. LGD now will get that mid lane turn. TP out. coming through from Cube and realizes he's overextended. And that side lane pressure shut down right quick. Even TJ there's like, just in case he stayed in the bush, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the shirt into there. Not gonna be so. And honestly, I'm very surprised at the state of the game right now, right? We feel like LGD have had the complete control. And, and for the most part, they have. They have a Gwyn who's six and two. They have Jay in the mid lane who's six and oh, three and oh on Eric. But it's still just a slight gold lead for LG to an extent. And it's still RA looking promising when iBoy can navigate the fights. If he can. Like this is so this is where I'm coming into the problem with where Adam right. Like Stride, yes, has a good amount of burst damage. So if someone gets close to him, you can try and burst him out. The only person that, that you really have that opportunity with is Jay, because Fearness will have the Shroud. Shadow, you could technically burst out, but he's going full tank, so he's going to be kind of difficult to burst out the Hecarim. And Eric's just going to be out of range for you. So it's actually pretty difficult for uh, Rare Adam to operate fights in just the, the way that they're building. And the fact that they don't really have any sort of backline pressure for Eric, so in 90% of fights, Eric should be totally fine. Um, even Eric, like... I would personally prefer to probably see the uh, the, the Kra uh, Kraken Slayer build come out from him, but I can kind of understand with the burst that he's a bit worried about being mispositioned as Shadow catches. Yep, there's no way Cube hit. Oh, wait. See you, see you. Just not realize or not seeing anybody else in the map makes LGD pull away. They had the tools to commit there, but an overextension could mean the dragon goes over to RA. So. A little bit of assuredness from LGD there as we see the 1v1 continuing in the bot side. But all the bodies from LGD definitely focused around this objective. Yeah, patience from LGD because of that dragon, right? You don't want to pull the trigger on these big ultimates, especially from like Fearness and from Shadow, right before these fight kicks off. Because I mean Hecram's whole identity in team fights is this ultimate. And a lot of Fearness damage goes out the window and kind of the AoE damage specifically with this and um, when you lose that ultimate as well. So I like the fact that LGD played that slow. Drive though, pushing in his top lane, knows that he has the TP to get to a fight if needs be. And it looks like Rare Adam are just going to trade this dragon for that vision code around the barrel. A bit of trading going on will be soul point for LGD though. A very, very... Uh, Precarious predicament, I feel like, RA, because it does force okay, their hand further on in the game. But yep, Jin Zhao will spot this happening. <laughs> Baron only about a couple thousand health down, it means RA back away. Yeah, I just love that. It's just like, excuse me, could you not? As he places <laughs> down the ward, it's like, we are aware of this. We know that this is happening. You're like, fooling nobody we can here, see Adam. you. It's like somebody you... hiding behind a very tiny tree in the middle of a park or something. It's like, I can see you there. <laughs> Cube can see Fearness and Shadow and Mega Death Rocket oh, as God. all three come together to get the kill for Eric. It's a symphony of death. 
Four Cube. It looks beautiful from LGD as they're able to corral him directly into the waiting arms of Eric, who will pick up his fourth kill of the game. They're looking at six kills a piece for the solo laners. Kills with snipes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, look, that's one of the benefits with Jinx, right? Like, I look, I'm not going to lie. Jinx is one of the AD carries I love playing whenever I play AD carry. Absolutely. Because I suck at the laning <laughs> But if I can just fire a rocket off, pick up like two, three kills in the early stages, I come out looking like a god from the lane base. So, I mean, it's it's a viable strategy that teams can enact. And uh, Eric's been doing a wonderful job of it this time around. I still, it's the funniest thing that now, like, it was always about the intricacy of things and like, oh, we gotta switch between the weapons and stuff. Now it's just since Lethal Tempo came along. Just pull out fish bones. Just go brrr. Just, yep, just pull out fish <laughs> bones, shoot rockets over and over again. No big deal. Uh, we'll see if Yuyanja actually wants this fight. This is a 2v, or 3v5, rather. And Yuyanja's already almost dead. Jake gets the kill. And there's no hope for RA in this one. Fearness is taking a 1v2. Shadow's in the pit still dying to the spikes. But they get the Baron. And LGD now moving forward. The perfect execution. Jake just dies outright, though. This is a big fight for RA. Can they turn this around? Strive getting a double kill. And that's what we're talking about, right? Like, Strive has the opportunity to burst out Jay if Jay goes in without the Shroud and isn't able to play it safe. So Jay tries to go back in off the reset on the team fight, but ends up cost him alongside Jin Zhao. So it is going to be the 1 4 2 in kills, but with Baron going the way of LGD, now the issues start to come into play for Rare Adam, as you can start to siege up with this uh, Jinx and make things happen for LGD. But great fight to start things off, right? Like, Yuanja goes down. And here, a miscommunication on LGD side, right? Like, Jay can play up alongside Fearness here and actually look for some of the kills on towards the two-man unit on the top side. But you can see there, like, Jay goes in, has no uh, real damage or uh, survivability. And with the already completed Lich Bane that came through the second item for Strive, he hurts if he's able to uh, get on top of you in first year. Yeah, this mountain soul is helping a lot. These close quarters, especially that. Oh no. Yuyanja misses the flash over the wall. Will forfeit his life because of it. And not much to say there. Unfortunate Shadow now moving in, trying to get Vision Control established. And a minute and a half until this next dragon. So LGD very much turning their focus towards that mountain soul push in on the bot side as well wave is totally fine on top end is because he's strive trying to move up to at least get some wave control over top lane but you got push mid as well like There's you're no in a great spot it. here for lgd to take this tower get have your vision control established in the jungle reset and come out and look for that fight and if you're trying to enter river for rare adam how do you try and do that right like fearness can set up really well at these chokes same when you look at the jin Zhao ultimate eric's going to be totally fine and you're even setting up for uh, Shadow of these big ultimates if he doesn't get caught. I, yeah, I don't know if that's what you want to do. Uh, and luckily, Eric is there to pop some shots into Eye Boy, but Shadow goes in, goes immediately out. All right, it's not the end of the world. Shadow's ult should be back up in time. The rest of LGD needs to reset, though. I don't know why they're sticking around here. Like, you actually want to get back here pretty quickly to try and maintain control over the, the river, but um, Eric isn't resetting. Same with Jin Zhao. Jinjo's running out of wards, and it's where Adam start to clear out all this vision. And um, this could have been a mistake from LGD. It might give access to rare Adam to this river once more. Because RA moving in as a full five man towards this mid lane, trying to get some real estate in front of this Baron pit, or dragon pit rather. I will say, fourth item just completed for Fearness will be that Nasher now. And the item differentials are you know, present, but it's more so. I boy versus Eric in this moment. Who stays alive the longest? Who can put out that consistent damage? Can Jay find the pick? We get set for this 5v5. This dragon, all pivotal for LGD to secure this win. They don't need it. RA can force the, the issue here as Jay going around the side for the flank a little bit early. And now LGD are split all the way across the map. They got to get back together if they want to take this fight. We have Shadow over the wings. There's grasping roots. They're forcing into Shadow's hands here. And this is all set up for LGD beautifully. The J engage on the back line. You've got Eyeboy still alive on the side. He's doing work on this Vayne. You've got to get the Vayne. You've got to get the Vayne. He's still going. He's still going. Two kills. Three kills. Can it be a Quadra? Can it be a Penta? Oh my god. Ori 
smashed a team fight in a penta kill for iBoy. Nobody got onto iBoy. All the point and click CC that we talked about, all the opportunities to try and lock up this vein, and nobody actually does it. Rare Adam able to play against what LGD have, and for LGD again, it looked good at the start, but there were so many issues in that team fight where they weren't actually able to play it out correctly. Like Eric getting incredibly low, taking a ton of damage coming through from the victor. You've got the uh, J not able to follow up onto the key carries. They're still jumping onto Cube, but Cube isn't the problem in these fights. He's two and seven. You've got to get onto the victor of the vein. You see it here, right? Like grasping roots comes through, but Eric takes a massive accelerated shock blast at the start of this. So he's got to play that super safe alongside Lian. J focusing on towards the uh, Cube as well, not paying attention towards iBoy. Like nobody here has put any sort of damage CC or anything over towards iBoy, and that is a massive mistake that you cannot make in these team fights. Three people walked past him or used abilities past iBoy, the devastating charge, the onslaught of shadows, Jay's perfect, like everything, everything was just not thrown at iBoy, and that sets up iBoy beautifully. Now he's going to the moon, as he's got six kills, having finished his fourth item because of that, and this changes the entirety of the game, and we're 32 minutes in. I mean, look, it definitely opens up uh, windows for Rare Adam, but I think it's also going to be a slap in the face, a rude awakening for LGD, is now they can realize we need to get iBoy, but where are you going? No, no one's they're there. They're not going for him. He's still untouched, and he's going to find another kill. iBoy is on fire right now. He's using the cleanse. He's going forward. He's getting the essence here, but that is it for the fight. It's just the one for one, top for support. LGD have no idea to team fight. My god, like this is Shadow going way overextended there. Not even connecting onto iBoy. iBoy's sitting there in the wings and he's still trying to focus on towards Lian. I don't understand it. Now you get mid pushed in, they can turn over towards this Baron, and you know that with uh, how fed iBoy is, they can try and just burst it down. LGD don't even feel comfortable trying to contest this right now. How have we even gotten to this point? <laughs> Look, I am mind blown that we went from a game where iBoy was so quiet. There was literally nothing coming out of this vein. It was all cube. It was all strive. It was all the end. Coming off of a pentakill. Now, he is who you have to worry about. He is who you have to focus down, and they still don't do it. Who did cube hurt? Like, what did cube say before this game? <laughs> That everyone in LGD is like, we have to kill I feel like it's mostly but, Shadow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, even when we looked at, like, that last team, like, the actual team fight, Jay just completely ignored iBoy, despite the fact he was, like, right beside him. So, I don't know. But someone, somewhere, <laughs> has a vendetta against Cube, and iBoy is making the most of it. Exactly what you gotta do. The theme feels like it's been Strike when the Iron is hot. I will see if Jay... Can do so. Oh my god. Yanja flashes but dies anyways. And that's the kind of pick you need for LGD. Uh, I boy step it up. Maybe we're gonna get the trigger pull from Shadow, but I think he's realized his uh, transgressions earlier on. They start up the Baron to try and force RA's hand. But now you are heavily reliant on Shadow getting this big engage on top. It's I boy and he's already at half health. Jinjo trying to see if he can get that uh, in advance, but Look at the I mean, yeah, Cube is just pushing them back. Like, it's it's like yes, I boy stepping forward, but it is certainly just Cube being able to yeah. keep the uh, the accelerate shot class there, and LGD being disjointed on actually going for the invade or the re engage. A lot of health loss as well from Shadow on the Baron as he's taking the spikes in the backside of the pit. So nicely done from RA to kind of play forward like that, as you were saying, utilizing Q pressure, iBoy playing up and just making sure that he can't get that Baron for free and, and snowball this even more. And we're getting to a point where it's very even, right? Like we have full build coming through uh, for Strive himself. We're getting there for the ADs and the gold lead, very insignificant at this point, only about a thousand, but even more so because of the momentum in this game. LGD trying to get priority now in mid lane. Still one dragon away from Soul, but Rare Adam, they control this area. Now, can they get onto iBoy? Can they try and orchestrate this? No flash on Jinjo, but iBoy will have his up momentarily and the cleanse as well. So those pointing clicks, maybe iBoy can try and avoid them. 
also on the other side, Eric just trying to find something to hold on to in these fights, right? He's, he's got the stopwatch now. We have a lot available for LGD Shadow on the flank as well. But this, I feel like we're getting to the last straws here for LGD. They've got to find a good team fight. They've got to make it count. Here we go. It's front to back, and it's working out beautifully for LGD. They are caught in the chokehold, but it's because of the Strive Chaos Storm, and you can't get any more damage from that. Devastating Charge doesn't connect. Eyeboy flashing over the walls. Beautiful. Eric's still full health, though, meaning a 4v4 can ensue. Again, it's been a trade of top four support Jay. for either side. Jay connects it, but can't go through with it. Strive able to separate the distance here, and this could just be Dragon number three for RA, and it is. Yeah, I mean, they're investing so much into these fights for LGD, but again, like, not getting onto Eyeboy, he's able to flash away. Then you're looking at going, right, Fearness goes overextended. He goes down and because Jay doesn't have the perfect execution and there's no Onslaught Shadows for Shadow, they're just able to back away. Now they just turn straight towards the bar. Oh you know that this is happening. Jay has perfect execution back up though. This could be it, but it's Shadow gone. gotta go, Can Shadow's Shadow gotta in? go. He's gotta get in there. He's not gonna pull the trigger. And that's a Baron for RA. They wanna take the fight afterwards. Jay taking a lot of damage on the back of it though. Shadow waiting, not wanting to pull the trigger yet. The Onslaught of Shadows is up and he goes in for the double. That's huge for LGD. TP. They're TPing in. This could be the snowball, just like in game number one. That sealed it for LGD. Fearness going for it. Hits Eyeboy with the needlework. He's going to die though. Eyeboy on the back is still alive. It's 2v4, and LGD come away with it. Rare Adam do get the Baron, but LGD win the fight. They've now got the wave in top if they want to try and push in onto the turret as well. You cannot try and defend this as Rare Adam because there's just too many moving parts that can still try and jump on you underneath the terror. Jin Jin crucially has his flashback up, so that point and click CC for Eyeboy is up and available. It is, and they're pushing in the top side. The excited procs coming through for Eric as they try to get this in hip tower. Eyeboy able to wave clear with Strive, though, and it pulls LGD off the top side. Well, GD will back away. Terror in their favor. All outer terrors depth now for LGD. Rare Assum. They're trying desperately to continue to play these fights, but you can see, look, when the moving parts are actually there and LGD are able to make it work, it's so damn strong. Also, Jay wonderfully well played fight moves in with the initial part of the perfect execution instantly dives back out with the shirt can flip to buy space and even though he knows that look he's gonna to have to invest a lot in this fight managed to keep himself safe and shadows well just about able to follow up to get the double kill fairness as well unfortunate here tries to go for the predict on which way eye boy was moving completely yeah. flubs it I don't think you needed to toss that out that quickly. Just kind of panic stations. You could see LGD were like, maybe this is the fight that can win the game. But that adrenaline pumping yeah, through them absolutely. causes mistakes. <laughs> it definitely does. I will say, I, I could just imagine Shadow smashing his R key that entire time. It was like literally a couple seconds from going. He's like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And he finally gets it off and, and gets that double kill for it. So beautifully done for LGD to buy some time, but especially to out position Rare Adam in that fight. RA take a position themselves in the mid lane. We have two minutes until the dragon. Neither of these teams want to let this mountain soul go. No Baron buff going to be situated for Rare Adam very soon as well. Not really getting much off the play thanks to that team fight from LGD. We'll start to group up on the spot lane because they see Fearness trying to shove in that top. So maybe they'll get a terror for their troubles. But I mean, for LGD, you're fairly all right with that. I don't know about committing two members to this mid lane though. Because yeah, now Rare know. Adam are going to get more. What are you? Oh what my are these God. games, Dad? What are those? As Inhib Tower falls in the bot lane, RA. Don't get the inhib as Here's the they're flanks, getting though. surrounded. Jay and Shadow on the back. Shadow has been spotted out, but RA feel confident to go in. They want to take the 5v3 before they can get to the fight. Eyeboy's still alive. He's gotten one of them. He's going to go for two. This is the fight for RA. Eyeboy is still alive. Is he going to survive for much longer? The shield bow is doing so much work. They've done it. RA win the series. A quadra kill for Stride to finish it out. And LGD, their team fighting and decision making came back to bite them as Rare Asim will push on to the next. How does this happen? I boy, RA from the brink of misery 
come out and take their second series win of the season. What a game and what a series from RA. You see the smiles on their faces. They know they just came away with a wonderful victory. And Rare Adam, 